Some Republicans are starting to think that they're not running against the 80-year-old ice cream eating man in the White House, but rather his overly excited second in command. A vote for President Biden is actually a vote for President Harris. We are running against Kamala Harris. Make no bones about it. The New York Times knows it. Every liberal knows it. They know that it's Kamala Harris that's going to end up being president of the United States if Joe Biden wins this election. Nikki Haley is the only one who thinks Kamala is important. The White House trying to bolster Harris's image by putting her in places that make her seem important. The Washington Post noting that Kamala was, quote, symbolically positioned <laughs> between Kevin McCarthy and Joe Biden during the debt ceiling talks. But the White House is dismissing concerns that Kamala will be needed in the future. What do you say to anyone who is questioning whether the president would survive a full four-year term? If you look at what he's been able to do, uh, he has been able to push forward and get done historic pieces of legislation. Uh, he has gotten more done than any other president. This is a president that's been attacked during 2020, where people said, oh, no one's going to, he's not going to win. He's not able to get it done. There's no way he's going to be the next president, and he made it happen. All right, so Dana, I think they're jumping the gun here. They're talking about whether uh, Joe will survive the, the four years if he's elected. The primary's a year away. What are the odds that Joe is favored to be at the primary? He's degrading faster than a paper straw and a can of Fresca. Oh, I hate when that happens. I know. I hate when that happens. So, uh, by my count, this is the 17th story that the Washington Post has run about a remake of Count Kamala Harris that was planted by her team to try to show that she was in that she was instrumental in doing something. And the Washington Post wrote it. Right. And they said she was symbolically placed. And then you can see, oh, there she was in between. Did you hear anything about her at all, at any time? No. At all? And even when it goes to the Senate where she has all the relationships, there just wasn't, there wasn't any of that. I think that they're starting to realize that the Republicans will campaign on this point and say that if you, Joe Biden is elected every single day of the next four years could be Kamala's inauguration day. Mm. And they're making it an issue. And today, Kamala Harris was asked, do you think that President Biden will be able to fulfill a full term? And she's, they're not sure how to answer it. Now, I think that barring any unforeseen circumstances, I think the Democrats are stuck with Joe Biden and he's going to be their nominee. And they are going to have to figure out whether they can just try to make the Republicans so toxic that this is OK again or figure out a way that Kamala could answer that question with some credibility. I still think, Jesse, the idea that they're forgetting that there's a year away. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a lot can happen in a year. We've seen the guy falling a lot. I mean, it's not getting any better. Right. A year it's, is a long. It's not, it's not four more years. It's the next two years. Yeah. Nikki Haley, this is a brilliant line. Mm -hmm. And here's why. I spoke to a political consultant, and he said the importance of framing the issue is the number one thing in politics. Yep. What you want to do is you want to frame an issue that makes your opponent operate in a space that hurts them. Mm. So when a Republican says we're actually running against Kamala Harris, what does that make Democrats say? That makes Democrats have to talk about Joe Biden's age, Joe Biden's physical and Joe Biden's mental health. It puts them in an even more awkward position because then they also have to insist and acknowledge that Kamala Harris is next in line. And they have to try to say that she's ready for the job or they have to admit that, you know what, she's not ready for the job. Mm -hmm. And that makes a point about Joe Biden, that Joe Biden had the biggest decision he'd ever make when he names his vice president. And you're basically saying that decision was terrible. So... And it also makes black women extremely upset when you're having a conversation about Kamala Harris not being ready for the job. So I think not only should Nikki hammer this, every Republican candidate should say this. We're actually running against Kamala Harris. And you just drill it into the voters' minds. You drill it into the media's mind, into the Democrats' mind, and make the Democrats and the media react to that. All right, Judge, I'm going to disagree with Jesse. I think that the decision to choose Kamala as VP was brilliant for Joe because she's so much worse. You don't pick a better choice. She, she was an insurance policy. Yeah, no one's going to go after Joe <laughs> if you've got to deal with that. But no, 
know. You're an idiot, Jesse. Yeah, <laughs> but I liked it. I liked what you said. I mean, I like the line that Nikki Haley used. Uh, uh, Nikki Haley used. Look, Biden is older than 96 percent of America. Mm. Did you know that? Wow. Okay. And yet, uh, when Jackie Heinrich asked the question, you know, was he going to be able to get through all of this, KJP, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, gets all upset and says, he did things when, I think the words were, he was attacked during 2020, and he made it. He showed everyone was wrong. He got elected. Well, that's a great reason to reelect him again. He got elected once. And if anything speaks to the issue that we talked about in the A block and the border, and the incompetence of Kamala Harris is the fact that she is the border czar, mm -hmm. okay? She is the woman who is the border czar who should be protecting. How about women? How about children? How about you say something that, you know, I'm a woman and I'm a former prosecutor and I want to protect these women from being raped and I want to protect the young girls from being molested. I want to do something. No, she's too busy giggling and symbolically sitting between Biden <laughs> And McCarthy, <laughs> I mean, give me a break. This is this is uh, th everybody said when Joe first ran. Remember, he said he was going to be a transitional president. Everybody thought one of two things: one, he was going to be different than Donald Trump, or he was just going to transition so that she could be president. Well, they've proven their case. She can never yeah. be president mm -hmm. because she doesn't even know how to be vice president. She's not the border czar. She's bordering on the bazaar. <laughs> And we'll be right back, <laughs> not before I talk to Harold Ford, <laughs> with giving him the most important question. All right, the real challenger isn't Kamala, because if Joe bows out, it's RFK Jr., ah. because he is more liked than Kamala in the Democratic Party. He's more liked among independents, and obviously he's liked by Republicans. He's way more popular, more sensible, and more moderate than Kamala. And I secretly think that you are closer to RFK Jr. than you are to Kamala, because Kamala's radical. You're not a radical. RFK is a moderate. Don't you think he's the real challenge for the Republicans? You mean because he's running against Joe Biden? Yeah, and, and, Joe, and Joe's not going to make it. Let's say, I say the odds are Joe's not going to make it to next year. Well, I mean, God, as a, as a God, he's going to drop out. God for, well, if he would have, God forbid. Really? If, if, I just have does. to say something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think Jesse is, is right. Um, what, com, what, what Nikki Haley is saying um, puts a, it, it, it's a frame and it forces three questions and you ask him about him, about Kamala Harris, and it poses the question about RFK Jr. also. He's polling 20 plus percent. Mm -hmm. And what it really begs the question is, do you find another Democrat getting into the race if these kind of questions continue to be asked? I think for Democrats to, to pretend that uh, Vice President Harris, who was such an accomplished attorney general, whatever you want to say about her. She was, she was, she was not long in the Senate, but she was a tough on crime attorney general. She got beat up by some of the progressives on California because they thought she was too tough around these issues. We've set it around the table. If I were her, I would show up at the border. If I were her, I'd show up mysteriously in Ukraine. If I were her, I would lead an effort around the country over the next three to six months as we get ready to go into the summer. We're already, almost already in the summer talking about ways in which we can help cities and municipalities with the kinds of tools they need to hire more police, to get morale back up in, 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 uh, in police departments around the country, uh, and to get rid of some of this Cassius Bell and see if it's working. That's how you're going to show people that you're ready. Now, some of the things they're talking about and hiring new people, all that is fine, but it's substance. If we don't tackle it that way, uh, I think what Jesse said and what Governor Haley is doing here uh, we'll, we'll have some traction and could, could end up impacting this race in ways, Democrats, that we don't want it to. And you heard it here first, Harold, entering the race. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him. He said, someone's coming in. We knew that. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.